amidst all that. So welcome everybody. This is um, podcast and topic this evening is dealing with pain. Today is January 25th, 2024. So pain, I was actually feeling about pain. And I remember the first time um, somebody suggested that instead of resisting pain, because a lot of the times um, I find myself when I feel that there is a pain in my, bo in my body, I would just freeze. And um, so that my response is to really freeze up and actually by freezing up my body actually makes it worse. And then when I, I forgot what was the, the context, but um, I was guided to actually feel into the pain. And so when I actually start to, um, I think at the time I was having pain in my um, right shoulder area, the area of my body is really tight. And this is getting to, to the point where the, the, the pain is bothering me. So instead of trying to resist the pain is to actually just feel the pain. So, so when I find that when I actually stop resisting the pain and actually feel wherever it is in my body, I have this pain, the nature of the pain starts to shift. And it actually become, for me anyways, more mellow or less. And so that, that got me to be more curious about what pain is. And um, so pain, some people say that it is not real, meaning that it is something that our mind um, is, is a mental pattern that we experience. So in that way, it is not real in that we can't see what pain it looks like. Pain is, there's not a color to it. We feel it. And when we feel it, um, we know that, you know, there's something wrong with that area. And we will look at our body. So pain is kind of a way that our body communicates with us, kind of tapping our shoulder and say, hey, take a look at this area um, and or do something. I, I need help. It's really your body communicating with you that there's some area. And for me, it, it was my, my right shoulder needed you know some attention so and when I gave it the attention that my body asked for it does not the body does not have to give me as much pain anymore um so that's one thing I notice about pain is and then when I start to learn more about you know how to how to diffuse pain or or even heal it or get rid of it altogether um i learned that there are actually you know there's a lot of different causes for having pain and it could be an infection it could be a an inflammation it could be a chronic inflammation it could be an injury it could be um referred pain, which is the pain could be further up or further down in my body, but I feel it in this one area. Where you feel pain does not mean that the origin of the pain is there. Um, a lot of the times it is, and but sometimes it's not. So when it is not, then it's called a referred pain. And then what else is there? Let me just check my list. Um, so it could be because the part of the body, there's some degeneration. And 
or it could be a repetitive pain, meaning that, you know, if I do something a lot, let's say if I use, use my right hand to, um, you know, scrub the table or, you know, been doing a lot of work with my right side, then I may feel it as a pain in that part of my body. And then last but not least, it could be because of a, um, a psycho-emotional component to it. Meaning that, um, yes, at first it may be because of um, an injury, but the injury, the body heals itself. And usually after a couple of days or a week or, or two, usually your body would heal up. However, the psycho-emotional part of it is a, com a component when if you haven't dealt with that, it actually, um, your body uses that as a, uses the pain, even though the body has healed. However, the psycho-emotional part of it is not healed. Your body will recreate the pain to to draw your attention to something so there so there is that as well so there's a lot of different components for why our body has pain and then um another way of looking at it is is that our body um is actually we're we are divine essence embodied in in this in this body. So we have a soul. We have a, so we have a soul, and the soul is experiencing this reality um, through a body. And when there is a disconnect between your communication with your soul, then it may translate as pain or other illness. So. Usually when there is something wrong with your body, um, there's a good chance that there is a misalignment between what you are doing and also what your soul wants you to experience. So there is that to, to think about as well. Meaning that if we are more or less living the path or living the life that our soul wants us to live, then usually your body would be in pretty good shape or in fairly good shape. But if your body is not, then one of the things you may want to look at is, are you living the life that your soul really wants you to live here? Um, why I say that is because I, I remember hearing a lot of the times that um, Sifu James mentioned, and it's not just Sifu James, I think a, a lot of other people has mentioned as well, is that in conversation, when they are having conversation with their higher self, their higher self, uh, like, um, I'm kind of talking about Sifu James now, he mentioned to us that um, he used to be a into finance. He used to be a finance guy and he's doing very well, making big money, you know, traveling, living the life. But then his his soul kind of, you know, started to tell him that, well, you know what? Yes, you've lived your life and now it's time for you to do something else. So that's what the soul wants him to do. And so of course our ego mind does not like to change. So so he didn't, didn't really heed um, that that talking from from the soul and that's when he started to get some illness so one of the way that our soul um, wants to get our attention is to give us illness I'm not saying that if you're ill then yeah you you've been a bad person because you're not listening to your soul I'm just saying that that may be one of the ways that your soul can cause you to stop because when we are ill it it usually pauses us it, it, it 
it slows us down. So we have to actually face the illness or um, whatever it is that we have to deal with in our body. So that's one of the way that our soul can get us to listen to what the soul is trying to tell us to do. So um, what else? And then there is, and for me, it's um, one of the ways that <clears throat> it kind of attracted me to learning more about healing is actually learning about energy, how energy flows, how what we can do with energy. And energy is, I'm, I, I think I've mentioned it earlier, but I just want to mention it again, is I don't consider myself a healer. Um, I'm definitely not a doctor of any kind. I don't have that medical background. And I'm I'm not dealing, I'm not talking about pain from a medical point of view. I'm not even talking about pain from a healing point of view. I'm just talking about dealing with pain from energy and spiritual point of view because those are the the things that I'm that I actually have considered and I have more opinion or experience on and so um I have had some issues like pain in my body before I think I've mentioned it last year I think it was last year or maybe the year before, I forgot now. Um, I had some pain in my left foot. There was one point where every time I walk on it, it's I, I actually feel painful. And so um, it, it, it did slow me down. And, and I really, that really prompted me to um, find out more about, okay, how do I work with myself to shift that reality because I do know one thing um, even though I'm, I'm not always um, I'm not always I would say I don't always remember it but I at some point in my mind I do know that I create my own reality I create my own experience so and when I had that um, pain in my left foot, and more specifically is ankle area, ankle and um, knee ankle area. So that's when I really have a chance to create my experience, or, or I should say to recreate and shift my own experience of that um, pain in my body. And it and so I want to share that experience so that it's it's a way for all of you maybe um, to you know, it's it's a way for all of you to um, it's, it's my example. If you feel that that works for you, then yeah, please feel free to take my example and create your own example. So what I did was I, I know that okay, um, I feel pain, so that something is not is is just not um, working right with that left foot and ankle area. So I was paying more attention to how I treat my my feet, especially my left feet. So when I sit, though, I like to sometimes just curl my legs up and. And I might have twisted my ankle in um, more ways um, than I should be doing. So, so that I, I kind of got more present to that. And then, so I, I stopped myself. I, I kind of corrected how I sit and find a better way to sit. And then I still experience sometimes experience that pain and and it's more pronounced the, the longer I walk so that's 
just through experience, I I do I I I, I notice that. So then I would have to like when I plan on taking a long walk, let's say when I go to High Park, I usually would walk fairly consistently for at least 45 minutes. Um, not 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 a you know, very quick or power walk, but you know, I would definitely work up a, a sweat by the end of it, even when when it's in winter time. So I do walk quite briskly round and about for, if not a full hour, at least a good 45 minutes. So then beforehand, I actually just program myself, okay, I'm going to, um, so I, I have a conversation with my fetus. I intend to walk. There is no condition under which I'm, I'm just going to, you know, not walk. Because I knew my my body needed that exercise, and I also like the being out in the fresh air and just take in the as much nature as I can get while I'm still in the city. So I am definitely going to keep doing that. So how comfortable I'm going to be? That's really between my body and me. So I kind of let my body know that you know. If you like to experience pain, then yeah, I'm still gonna walk even when I'm even if I'm in pain. And I would like it if there's no pain. And I would do whatever I can to to make it easier for my body to not have pain. So I would walk slower or just be more intentional not to um put too much pressure on my feet and, and all of that. So I do work with my body and I'm not. I'm not really um, being a tyrant. However, I do co-create that whole experience with my body and I and I do that consciously. And you know, after a while I've done that for after a while. And you know, my 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 foot started to get better and better and better. And at some point, um I think it it. The worst part of it was about a month. And then after that month, I, it actually started to get better and better and better. So that was how I created my own healing journey. It is um, like I, I pay attention to what is what I am what am I doing that is contributing, contributing to um, the experience that I'm having. And then I kind of have to decide, you know, what am I willing to do to to um, help myself? And I co-created the experience with my body. So it's, I know my body is doing its best, but I also want to um, let my body know that, you know what, not walking is not an option. So... I, I co-created that experience with my body. And that's something that we can all do is no matter what kind of, it could be pain or it could be any other ailment as well. So um, I've been talking for a while. I just want to get some feedback, questions, suggestions, comments so far. My my question is my question is that how you said that sometimes it's how your soul wants to experience that right. So do you sit down and talk to the soul like what you really what experience you are really going to have with the, our higher self? How do we know that like if I'm living a day to day life, yes. Thank God so far I don't have like major issues with my health. And is that indication am I on the right path? Or 
I'm saying, okay, probably my body is kind of stubborn and I take good care of as a physical body. Probably I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So how do I know basically the purpose or the experience my soul needs to uh, complete at this lifetime? How do I know that? Um, <clears throat> How do you know that? Well, um, I think the energy is the way it is now. It's actually, if you're not, if you're not on point, you, um, you will really get a, a whack in the head. Mm -hmm. something like that you would re definitely get a whack in the head now um yeah I, I, I think that's that's what I believe because it's we are going through such strong energy going through really strong energy if we're not um on the right path then will get rained on or will something will happen whether it's accident or or you know people around us um, would let us know mm -hmm. so if everything is going okay then um, at the very least you even if you're not doing what it is that you're supposed to do. Um, I would say you would start to get um, some prompts. For example, if you keep asking, you know, what is it that I'm supposed to do? Then somewhere within you, there is there's the idea that you know you've missed something mm -hmm. so how do you tell what it is that you're supposed to do my suggestion is as to try different things so um for example um, i remember when i like before i was still in I was still in corporate and I was really um, in doing programming with um, computers, working all of that. It's, it's like there's something within me that knows, you know, this is not enough. There's something lacking. And I, I, I don't know, you know where to turn to. And so I just tried different things. I tried... Um, coaching I tried hypnosis and and I like I really tried a lot of different different things and I and it started to show me a way and a way and I've been following it following it so that's that's how it is mm -hmm. so be open to trying new things whether the new thing is, I don't know, doing doing yoga or taking salsa dance, whatever, whatever. <laughs> you know that I don't dance. <laughs> I don't sing. I don't dance. <laughs> well, then I would suggest to just, if you don't, so if you don't sing, you don't dance. Um, so you don't have to actually do that. Go, <laughs> yes, you don't have you to go know. out and, and and learn to dance. But you know, put on some you know dancing music at home and see what happens. <laughs> Thank you. It's um, it's really to follow what. 
Um, oh, okay. So now we're talking about how to recreate our reality, and and that's, and I think I mentioned a little bit about that. Is we as human to don't like change. We want to, you know, just um be. We like to experience the same thing so that we can ex expect what it is. So we know that we're going to have an, a good experience because we've done it before. We know what to expect. Um, we we like a little bit of adventure, but we don't like surprises. That's that's very human. So when you, or I should say, that's very human for um, people of a certain age, I if I were a lot younger, I may be completely open to um, doing different things. Yes. But um, the more you feel like something within you just wants to just have this feeling that is not enough, then it's time to try different things. And don't, don't, don't judge yourself. Uh, okay, yeah, that's not good. That's not good. It, like, just try it. You don't know whether it's good or not. Try it once, try it twice. If it's still not good, then move on to the next thing. Just to give yourself permission to do something new. And that's that's all you need to do. Is to try something new. Because when you try something new, you're sending a signal to your own unconscious mind that, oh, she is looking she's actually taking um taking the first step and then your your um your soul would be putting the next thing in front of you and the next thing may not be what you think it is it may be you know when you go do something you meet someone else who who is very good at um for example who, who is very good at you know Tai Chi, for example, and then they would influence you and get you to go with them, and then that would lead to something else. So it's it's like breadcrumbs. So, mm. but it it really it depends on you taking the first step to be open to trying new things, and then your your soul can give you the breadcrumbs, and it's really up to you to follow it or not. Thank you. Okay, so getting back to dealing with pain. Um, okay. Just take a look. Around. So I want to start by doing something that is very um, simple with all of you. Very simple, just um, because it's it's from simple things that we can build the building blocks for something that is more profound. So um, what is simple is yes and no. So being able to know what is yes and what is no is actually very important because when you talk to your body, because um, when we're starting to try to heal ourselves or create that healing journey for ourselves, um, it is about communicating with your body and our body does not know all these words to describe oh it's my muscle oh you have to do xyz your body cannot talk to you like that but your body can give you yes and no and when you um ask when you know that you know when you can consistently tell what a yes and what a no is from your body then you can become more um I would say methodical to ask the right set of questions in order to find out what your body actually needs. 
for example, should I be eating that bowl of French fry? No. If, if you know what your body is, yes and no, then you will be able to find out, you know, whether you should or should not. So, so that's, I just want to start with um, something as simple as knowing what a yes in the body feels like and what a no in the body feels like. So <clears throat> how do we do that? So find a yes first. So yes is a congruent, I agree, that kind of feeling. So search in yourself, you know, what does that feeling feel like when I have a, um, when I know that is good for me, when I'm congruent with that. So think of all the things that um, is good for you. For example, um, um, so drinking water, for example, drinking water, is that good for you or not? So find something that you know for sure is a yes, and then ask your body that. So it could be as simple as um, um, drinking water. So if you know for sure that drinking water is a yes for you, then ask yourself, should I drink more water now? And really feel. Because you know that it is a yes. So what you're feeling is what yes feels like in your body. Okay, and another way of doing it is usually name, okay? My body's name is Winnie, for example. So when I say I my, my body's name is Winnie, there is a certain feeling that is how it feels like. So, so my name is Winnie, and just feel how your body feels. So do a few of that and get used to what yes, what a yes in the body feels like. Okay. So then then you know what a yes feels like. <clears throat> and then the next thing is find out what a no feels like in your body. So what is a no? Um, I know for myself, I don't like cheese. Like I, for whatever reason, I just don't like cheese. So then I will ask myself, do you want to have cheese? And I would just, my, my, I feel my stomach is just turning over. So that's a, that's a no. That's a no in my body. So then at, so I don't know whether that's true for you. So you have to think of a series of questions, um, as many as you feel you need in order to give yourself that feeling of what a no feels like in your body. So what are, my, what are the criteria is, you know the answer is no ahead of time. So don't, don't ask questions that you have no idea whether it's a yes or no. We are doing, we are doing, we're trying to find out what a no feels like in your body. So ask yourself questions that you know the answer is a no, a definite no, not a maybe no, but a definite no. So ask those questions and really feel what your body feels like when it's a no, so that you familiarize with how your body feels when the answer is a no. And remember what that feels like. And you may have to do this exercise a few more times just to get good at noticing your body. So it's very important to find out 
what no feels like in your body and what a yes feels like in your body. Because once you have that, once you know what a yes feels like and what a no feels like, you can hear yourself. You can hear yourself with of anything because you can ask yourself yes no question how do you find out as i as i mentioned how do you find out you 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 notice what yes feels like in your body and you notice what a no feels like in your body and and after that, when you when you are good at doing that, then you can start to ask questions that you have no idea whether it's yes or no. And then you notice how your body reacts because your body knows a lot more than you do. Your body has an innate intelligence. It knows what... Um, supports itself or not so what you what you can do to help your body is to notice when your body is saying yes and what that feels like and when your body is saying no and what that feels like then after that you can start to ask your body questions for example i uh, there are lots of ways that um, a body can start to feel pain. One of them could be an infection. So if you feel a pain in your body, you can. one of the questions you can ask is, is this pain because of an infection? And then if you get a yes or a no answer, that actually um, gives you information that you can use. And then you can you can ask the next question. Maybe once you find out whether it is an infection, and if it is an infection, then you can ask. So, will if I take you know this remedy, is it going to help? And then your body would tell you whether it's a yes or a no. And then you just follow that. So that's how you when you can communicate. When you set up a communication system with your body, you can work with your body to create that um, experience of being healed. And it all starts by understanding what a yes feels like in your body and what a no feels like in the body. questions so do you all know what a yes feels like or a no feels like in your body you got that yet yeah i got i got the idea of it because when i go buy some supplement or even my grocery sometimes i just pick it up and i see like my body do you like this like i i said Mari, you like this? Do you like this? Do you think it's good for me? So it, it's like a pendulum and like I, I have created the system like, oh, do I like this? Do Don't I like this? I can detect up to that. No problem. The food or the supplements and all that, that I do. And when I say no, it, it's like automatically I will put it back. So... Mm -hmm. But I think now the way you taught us the explanation, so it will it's a little more deeper. So I think it will go more further in in starting to notice the other things. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. So now I I said to myself, my name Tatiana. So I feel I feel okay when I say my name Leilani. I do like nervousness shaking so i got what is yes what is no but then i started to ask different question and it's always like no so you have to do it a few more times you can't just you know not so that's what i mean by you have to um 
not just not just your name. You have to have a few more examples. So there's a range. So we have a few more example of what yes feels like. And then uh, and then you have to feel what a no feels like. Thank you. Yeah, and once and and um, just be patient with yourself because this is this is really about setting up that communication with your body. Um and I want to really stress that your body actually um, is a very intelligent being. I am saying it as though, you know, it's different, as though it's a separate entity. But that's really what being human is about. A human being is an, a spirit experiencing reality through a body. So, it's really about creating the alignment with the body. And when you can create that alignment with your body, you will have, you have actually better access to your spirit, your guides as well, because they come through the body. And if you're not connected with your body, you don't know what, um, the, the, the body is trying to communicate with you, then how, like, if you can't even hear what your body is trying to say to you, how are you going to hear a guide trying to say to you? So it's, it's really starting to create and deepen that. We, we have a body, and for the longest time, I, I think, you know, I am a body, but it's, not that simple there is um it is creating that alignment and when the alignment is out that's usually that's when you notice and it's a good thing to be able to notice that so how you create alignment by feeling like what what our body loves and what it, do, it doesn't um that could be one way and the other way is just to observe just just to be patient with the body as well because my body likes some things that my soul may not be so may not be on board at so then you have to create that um I would say give and take because it takes all parts of us to create a a human experience so that's a good segue to what I was gonna ask is that there's our mind and there are our emotions that interfere with the body so part of the challenge will be to say that no I just want to talk to the body is that does that sound right? Um, okay, so then we come in with um, the emotions. And the other way is you know, it's a really good idea is to process all emotions first. Mm -hmm. Because emotions makes our body feel unsafe. And when your body does not feel safe, it does not like to communicate very much. So, um, yeah. 
process your emotions? Is that is that the, the question or did I understand? Uh, what about mental thoughts? There's also men mental. Okay. Your mental thoughts. Um I know it's hard to not think. However, when you're working, especially when you're trying to um, heal a body or, or create an environment for your body to heal, is better not think because thinking is what gives us, gets us into trouble. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And um, why? Because we, um, we create story and the story may not be true. I, what happened was, um, okay, so, <laughs> okay, I can give an example. So a couple of days ago, I started feeling um, like itchiness around my lips area. So I was thinking, oh gosh, it could be because, you know, I, I know that, that there is some um, flesh eating disease around. And, <laughs> <laughs> you, that, you know, who knows what they put in the rain? You know, it's been snowing and raining for so long. Maybe I caught some of that. <laughs> you know, that's also if you Google things, that's what will put you in there. And say, oh, it might be this. It might be that. Yep. Might be <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, yeah. And and that's not helping. <laughs> it, and so yeah, don't don't think when when you're trying to um, deal with the body is don't think because your body when you think you're actually um, creating the, the thinking itself has an energy pattern. So your thinking can actually interfere with your how your body is working. Wow. Yeah. So, so I I see a uh, thing. You guys don't laugh at me. <laughs> I was like years ago. I was like, uh, 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 how to say in the stock market. But I was very dizzy. Sometimes uh, you're doing experiment and need two hours, four hours. Never have a chance to look at the computer. But I. I definitely know which day the market is down and uh, which day is up because every time when the market is down, my buying is so painful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, that's that's what thinking will get you. That is it because I need the energy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. After than that, I never feel anything like a good, yes or no, or good or bad from my body. <laughs> that one is, is for, for sure. Because after so long the time, often time it happens that way. I understand the war. That's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's that's why um when you when you're dealing with the body is let let your mind go don't don't follow your mind because you it's to the best of your ability because our mind <laughs> um, we like to read, we like to, you know, we like to watch um, YouTube that talks about how, um, how to heal the body or what, what's going on in the body. And we put things in our mind that we think is real on the body. But it's a story and it actually creates an energy field that is interfering with how the body is actually running. So... 
um, if you really want to help your body, then don't think. Um, communicate with your body. Very important. Because when you listen to the body, and you don't try to um, be a doctor or, you know, try not to create scenarios um, to to interfere with the body. It's, it's actually if you manage to just let go of thinking and just be with the body, then the body actually can do a lot more when you're not interfering. <laughs> I, I totally agree, but also going back to the emotions, like, you know, if you have a lot of fear, wouldn't that interfere with communicating with the yeah. body? Yeah. So um, that's one thing that I would suggest, um, like all of us, we can do that, is to... Fear is actually a very good thing to process, it, but it could be any emotion. Could be any emotion. Is what you do is you just feel the fear, and you don't try to change it. You don't try to get rid of it. You just feel it. Like when you access, because fear is a pattern. When you don't try to change it, then it will change on its own. Mm. it's called the observer effect because mm. when you observe something then uh, you invariably change it and when you can observe something without passing judgment meaning that you don't try to get rid of it you don't try to say that it's good or bad you just observe it you are actually allowing um so energy to come in to shift it cool you, thank you uh, how do you um feel your body because i tried something like uh, i ask my higher self if you are here maybe you let me feel my uh cheek have some like pressure. I do feel that. But other than this specific requirement, I don't know how you you feel your body, you feel your whole body, not a spe specific place. Uh, uh, you say uh, to your Higher self, a uh, higher self, say, if it's a yes, please let me <laughs> feel my 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 cheek, feel some pressure. What? How exactly you feel? You feel your whole like I, I don't know exactly how, how, how can you feel your body? <laughs> Sorry. Um, how to feel the body? Yeah. Okay. Then one thing you can do is before you you do that is to just physically touch your body. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Physically touch your body. Yes. And especially if there is pain in a certain part of your body that you want to work with, is to really touch. Like don't don't try to, you know, poke it or do anything nasty. Just touch, gentle mm. touch, touch your body. Really feel your body. Feel it first. So you feel it with your hands first. Mm. Feel it with your hands first. And when you feel it with your hands, you kind of create that map in your mind. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You feel the map. So when you you physically touch yourself, you kind of create that map in your body. Mm -hmm. And then what you do is when you've done that, then you just quiet down. And then you 
start to relax your body. Okay. And then when you relax your body, then um, you kind of just scan your body in your mind. Just scan your body from top all the way to the bottom and you scan coming back again. Okay. okay. So that's one way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. I'll try. I guess need some time practice. It's a process, yes. Okay, where am I? Um, okay. So, very uh, uh, I've mentioned most of things already. Is um, know what a yes and what a no is, and then you can start to logically. You know, just create, write down some questions in order to allow your body to give you uh, a better understanding of what's going on with the pain. So some of the questions you may ask is, let's say, is it a structural thing or is it a functional or is it chemistry? So, so those questions, or you can ask something is, okay, let's say if the pain is in the right shoulder, then I can ask um, myself, is the, the, orig um, the orig origin of that pain, is it here? Is it at the, the shoulder level? So it, I will get a yes or no. And if, it, if it's a no, then I can, Ask the next question is, is the origin um, above? So in the head area, it would get a yes or no. And then that will um, kind of the next question, if it's a no, then I would say, is it down? Is it further down? So so you find out um, all the things that you can about the, the pain. And some of the other things you can do, as I'm, I think I mentioned it, I forgot last last time or the time before, is especially if you have the pain, then you want to let your body know what's going on by moving. So it's my it's my right shoulder. So I have to. So one of the ways I can find out more for my body is. Does the pain um, get better if I move my hand? Let's say if I stretch my hand out, does it get better or worse? If it gets better, then you know I let my I let my um, body know. Okay, so that's information. And then let's say if I put my pull my hand backwards, does it make it better or worse? So. Every time I find out information is to let your body know. So the way to let the body know is I tap on my head because um, the head is kind of has really can can um, it's it does not have to be that, but I use that because. That's what Richard Bartlett does. And he already has created that um, morphic field for using like a tap in the head as a, um, a way to let the body know. So why not use that? That's, so that's why I, I would use that as the tap, tap it in, meaning that, you know, let the body know. So find out everything, you know, and if I raise my hand at a 45 degrees, does it make the 
shoulder better or worse. So, so just experiment, do things to find out more about the nature of the pain. And that's, and once you have tapped everything in, so all, everything that you find, tap everything in, what you can do is um, use the eye patterns. The eye patterns is really a way that he has created in order to start to let your body to um, process all this information. And then the eye pattern is, you know, look up to the right and then down on the right and then go look to the upper left and then down on the left and then look back up. So use your eyes to do the infinity sign. So that is this um, symbol or signal to the body to process all the information that has been tapped in. So then the body would take all of that and then create a plan to improve upon it because now there these are information that your body does not know at the time so once you've done that then you retest you retest see if your hand or wherever it is that you have pain does it is has it improved usually it would have improved somewhat if not completely then you will go on to work with the area that you have pain. So these are some very practical and easy things that you can do to work with your body to start to create a shift of the pain pattern. Questions? Comments? I, I thought earlier you said that the body knows a lot more than we do. So how is it that the body does, doesn't know and needs to be educated? It's a communication. And um, the thing is, we don't really know what helps. The body or not so what we are creating is we are creating a way to work with the body to so what we by doing all this we are actually creating a healing story mm. it's a method for the body to get better okay. so that's why um, when you communicate with the body, then the body knows because the body gives you pain to let you know you need to look at it. Yeah, we need some help. And when you work with the body that way and you communicate with the body that way, then it, um, it does not have to rely on the pain to get your attention. Ah. Speaking of that, where does the nervous system come into play? Or is that part of the body? Um, of course, this is part of the body, yeah. Um, so our... So for example, like my hand, when I say, you know, shoulder, right shoulder is, it could be because of a nerve, maybe. Right. So then it's one of the question you can ask is, is the nerve, is the nervous system involved? And then you can kind of narrow it down. Where is it? where the um let's say thoracic um bone which one t1 t2 where is it 
involved because the 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 nerves are usually um the endings are, are around the, the the bone areas so you can find out okay where where it is so you know if may... we get um, if we get really good at it we don't need x-ray or mri <laughs> <laughs> um we yeah um we or the doctor um sure the thing with doctor is um you only see doctor i don't know a fraction of the time but right. you are with your body you know 24 7 so right. if you set up a good relationship with your body, a good communication with your body, your body can actually take care of a lot of things. And you only then need the, your doctor to take care of the big things like, um, or when you, when there is an accident where you know, something that those are really the times you really need the doctor. Whereas for you know day to day things, our body is actually um is like that. Our body is can heal itself most of the time. It's only when there are you know sudden trauma, accidents, those things, when your body it's too much for your body to handle, then it needs outside interference that most of the time if you are in good connection with your body and you listen to your body then your body actually takes care of most of the things true very true so um have I given you all enough to start to work with your, or start to deal with whatever pain that's? Um... Yes. Okay. So, so I just want to actually sum up. Okay. Very important to start small. So, so find out what yes feels like in your body. Find out what no feels like in your body. And then once you are good at that, then, um, then you can start to logically create a set of yes, no questions to ask your body, to start to communicate with your body. And then, um, and then just depending on where the pain is, then you start to work with your body to find out the you know what do you do that makes the pain worse what do you do to make the pain better so and then you just tap that and give that information to yourself to to your body and then let your body create a plan create a healing plan and then you see the results give your body some time and then you see the results and then you deep you kind of dig deeper into it if you still feel pain so that's how you can actually work with your body it doesn't mean that you don't need to see a doctor it just means that you know um be your own first line of answer just by communicating with your body there's a lot of things you can take care of. And so when you can work with your own body, then um, you don't have to rely on somebody else to do that for you. Can you remind about, you said, tapping, that it means that uh, information coming in so just tap. So when I asking uh, my body, 
what should I do to help with my pain? I should tap. So that's um, how so I receive. For example, if you, if you say, okay, so let's say pain is here. Is the, is the pain originate from here? If it says yes, then tap it in. If it says no, also tap it in. Tapping it in just means that you, you can, okay, note it. So your body starts to keep that score. Mm -hmm. And then the next question would be, okay, let's say if it's a no, then is it upper or is it lower? Where is the, where is the origin of the pain? So, so questions questions and then so every time you receive a piece of information you just tap it in okay then i already like know where is the pain and um i got even medical um document shows it very where what what the problem is can i ask my body you know give me suggestion what to do or what do not do and tap okay so just to let you know um your body does not know what the doctor knows your body knows how should I put it? Your body has its own logic. So when you're working with your body, you have to follow the body's logic. That's why that's why I say don't think. Because if you think you know, then um, you have to work with what the doctors say. You have to take the pills. You have to you know, follow that. But if you want to work with your body, then don't take those in. Two systems. The, your body does not um, know the, the doctor's system. So you mm -hmm. have to ask your body the questions and follow the logic of your body. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Okay, any other comments, questions? Maybe this is for next week, but um, there's so much talk about that our emotions affect our bodies. Do some people say that's where the whatever sickness, illness comes? So maybe you can talk about it next time. It's a big topic, I know. <laughs> um, I I will send you that. I will send you all that video. That's a video. It's a video by Zach Bush. Zach Bush actually um as a video out, Zach Bush is started off as being a medical doctor. And I'm not sure if he's still a doctor now, but he started off as being a medical doctor and he um, is now, what he said is that our body is light. So light meaning that we are defined essence embodied. So that's in his words, that's actually what he's saying is that our body is, is when there is illness is because we don't somehow we have created an environment where our body does not allow the light of our spirit to shine through. That's why we have illness. So why do we not allow the light of our spirit to shine through? A lot of it is because of the um, 
training that we have. We've been told we are not good enough. We are, I don't know. We, we've had, we've had, you know, um, traumatic relationships with our family and other relationships and, and that. And if we don't have a way to understand and be able to, I would say, release those emotions, that's when we get in our head and we create those in those 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 energy patterns that is going to um, create problems for our body. So yeah, it's a big topic. And um, yeah, I would I would send that. It it really resonated with me because that, that's that's how I always understand it is. So the picture I have is that the body is kind of like a a piece of glass, and the soul is kind of like the light. So the piece of glass, if the piece of glass is clear, then the light of the spirit can shine through. But if the piece of glass is all, you know, murky and um, maybe fractured, then the light that is, cannot really come through properly. And that's when we, the body starts to create these um, illness. It's because there's not enough proper light that's go through our body. So anyways, thank you for that. Um, there is one thing that I can, I, I can and let you all know that, you know, it's, it's really just meditation. Meditation will help a lot. So what kind of meditation? Just clear mind, meaning don't think. Let go of your thinking and really remember that you are not your thinking. Any other questions? So guided no. meditation is different? You have to do just silent meditation with ourself at least once a day. Um, I don't know who I like. Um, so you have to be the judge of that. Like, what works for you? Because I I don't know what works for you. Do you uh when you do meditation, do you try to uh e e elongate your breath or just the normal? You you elongate your breath, right? Yeah. Well, I I have a problem. When I try to elongate my breath, then my body is not relaxed. It's not. It's getting tight. Ah, so that's that's make. Make it really, I don't know. Uh -huh. That's why I say that um, elongate your breath, but make sure your body's comfortable. So there is that, there's that medium where um, you are 
elongating your breath, but your body is still able to be comfortable as well. Because most of the time you elongate your my my breath, my shoulder and my back were getting tight. So uh, I was wondering how can you elongate your breath and still relax? I never really <laughs> In that situation, when I try, my body okay. got, yeah. That's interesting. And in that case, I would suggest that you um, just work with relaxing your body first then. Okay, that's that was fine. Relaxing your body first. Oh, maybe a little bit longer but a lot a whole lot and uh, yeah ouch yeah um so it's it's a it's a practice um to be able to do both to be able to elongate your breath and then relax so then just work on one and then when you have relaxed your body, then work on elongating your breath and just do this and do it, you know, day by day. Don't try to do it all at once. So just train mm -hmm. your body. It's, it's, um, the, the more you practice it, the easier your body would be able to get to that state. So just one step at a time. Yeah. Is it necessarily to elongate your breath or you can meditate like I meditate without any manipulation with the breath? The thing is that um guided meditation, I can see it as long as this meditation going on, like for an hour, for one and a half hour, whatever. And when I do myself, I can do 10 minutes and then you know, that's it. It's not about doing an hour. So it's not about how long you do it. It's about shifting your state. You know, sometimes it takes me a good half hour to shift my state because my mind is all over the map. And sometimes it only takes me you know, a couple of minutes to get to a different state. So, um, so why elongate your breath? Because when you elongate your breath, you release your diaphragm. And that actually allows you to be relaxed internally. So that's um, so it's a it's a balance. So um, bit by bit, practice to do that. Can I just massage my diaphragm? I don't know what is right for you. <laughs> you have to find your own way. Okay. So I have I have a question about that meditation. Breathing through the nose and breathing out of the nose is better or breathing through the nose and letting out from your mouth? What is the difference in both practices? Um, I find for me it's easier to breathe in and out through my nose. But you have to... You have to find that for yourself. What is the right way for yourself? Because if I open my mouth, I find that it um, it's harder to stay in a certain state. I find it easier for me to shift my state when I just 
breathe in and out through my nose. Oh, so it's it's not the the practice like how uh, the the yoga teachers they say like this, and then meditation. Some of them they say, okay, breathe through your nose and breathe out your mouth. So it's basically the preference of the person, right? And also what you're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. And um, and I know that there are some breath where like you do that through your mouth. So it's what what are you trying to achieve? So for me, I'm like what I usually try to achieve in my meditation is to shift state. So I want to get to a state where um, I am not identified with, you know, Winnie. Mm -hmm. Because when I shift to a different state, like I'm more of the observer. So that's what I look for in my meditation. That's how I know that it's a good meditation is because when I'm when I'm in my Winnie state, I have all these thoughts and I have all these judgments. But when I shift state, it's like everything is good. So is that what you're looking for? If yes, then <laughs> find for yourself what is the most efficient way for you to shift into that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for all your questions, your patience. Um, and um, please do try some of these methods. And if you have any questions, uh, let me know next time. And I would be happy to answer to the best of my ability. Sure. I was thank you, Vinny. Get a meditation in, but I think we and we wouldn't have really have enough time for 